Vice Pro Westron has been sitting on the South Side Columbus since 1962, and our family took over in 1981 till now for 41 years. Our family immigrated from Hong Kong, April 1974. When I met my husband, his side family wanted to think whole restaurant. And I said, oh, one the restaurant. It'd be good and busy, and the opportunity, you know. Our family, seven, my mom, my dad, sister, brother, could participate to get into business. So work all together. A true family business. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Why Columbus, Ohio to come to you from Hong Kong? My aunt and uncle who sponsor us they live in Columbus, Ohio. But there's a big opportunity for a family to start a business, you know, for the better life. I was gonna ask what was the landscape like? Was it um, easy to get the ingredients that you would want? It's hard to get it back in days. It's hard to get bok choy, or Napa even. So they had to order from San Francisco, big shipment, and then distributed to the people. And part of this discussion is about your restaurant and, and how COVID-19, the entire pandemic, affected the business. Well, at that time, you know, they, the government ordering, shut down the dining service for March 14, and a lot of people get panicked and a lot of restaurants even closed for the number of months for the business, but we stay open. We were lucky to survive, actually. Mm -hmm. But during the time, we had a couple cooks got scared too, so it's all our family work only, so we working seven days straight, get the food pep, you know, get the business going. But we do okay, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. uh -huh. we survive, yes. Joy, as somebody who knows a lot about all the businesses throughout the Asian American community, what was that like on the impact for them during Oh, the certainly they struggled during the pandemic. A lot of, like what Connie said, a lot of Asian restaurants, Asian-owned restaurants, they closed. On the other hand, there were some or a few uh, Asian-owned restaurants that even thrived because of carryout. Uh, one of the challenges that we face as Asian, uh, for the Asian-owned businesses is this rise of um, hate crime for, for Asians just because, of course, that fallacy of where, of course, COVID started. Yes. And so a lot of us, uh, a lot of those Asian-owned businesses were affected by it. I mean, nationwide, I know that anti-Asian hate crime rose up to about 300%. Very not very much here in Columbus, Ohio, because culturally, we don't really want to make waves, you know, and we, we just mind our own business. And there, there was this mistrust about reporting those kinds of incidents. So there was that fear of reporting. And of course, there was that fear about this hate against, again, Asian especially the Asian-owned businesses. They were very much affected by that. I do heard of some restaurant, they get threatened letter. Yes. Mm -hmm. How is it being an Asian-American, Asian business in the city of Columbus? What is that like? And maybe Joy, from what you've heard from your, some of the people you work with, Connie is a business owner. We had a lot of people supportive then, you know, for the business at the time, you know, come from everywhere. We were amazed, you know, all the supporters to keep us alive. <laughs> Thanks to the Small Business Administration, SBA, and the City of Columbus and Franklin County, who provided education and really asked all these businesses, the Asian owned in particular, too, through the Asian American Commerce Group is to take a loan, you know, through PPP, of course, and the EIDL loan. And then Franklin County had this um, uh, recovery grant that a lot of our 
Asian-owned businesses actually took advantage of. That's how Asian-owned small business were survived. We had to reach out to make sure that uh, we are able to provide them the education. We had a speaker from SBA, we had a speaker from Columbus State that really helped them with the resources like giving them access to funds, access to finding ways to help them survive through this pandemic. We have construction, uh, engineering businesses, IT-owned businesses, we have restaurant, hotel, nail salons, as a matter of fact, very uh, big nowadays, you know, owned by mostly Nepalese or Indian, from eyebrow to massage to nail, are really coming out in the woodwork right now in terms of uh, ownership from Asian women, as a matter of fact. And that kind of speaks to how diverse the community is as well. Are there any obstacles for you, Connie, as like a, a woman owning a business, would you say? Uh, there's a lot of hard work, that's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah. So when people come in and sit down and eat at the rice bowl, what makes the restaurant unique and what would you say some of your specialties are here? Everyone has their own specialty. Number one dish, what's you got? General Soul Chicken. Now, spicy chicken wings, egg roll, because of homemade, homemade. So they love the sweet and sour sauce, homemade mustard. What is the most rewarding thing about working here at Eat uh, You see all the customer here coming in, just like a family. Some of them travel long distance, they left and come back, you know, first thing they come, come back. They come here, get their favorite food. <laughs> that probably feels pretty good yes, to see uh -huh. that, right? When they walk in, I say, oh, you're here, you know. It's like a big family, all the customer, all those years. Without them, we would be here. Joy and Connie, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation today. It's been really wonderful to learn more about the community and your business and the Asian American Commerce Group, so thank you. You're welcome. welcome. <laughs>